So two videos ago, if you go on the channel and you just go back two videos, I was talking about the difference between pull-ups and chin-ups and that you got to look at the direction of effort. Anyways, I posted that video in a recommended for you section on YouTube after I posted that. It said a video called pull-ups versus chin-ups, the big differences. I watched it. Most of it was total fucking bullshit. There was some okay advice in there, but for the most part, it was total fucking bullshit. I could have filled out two whiteboards of what was said that was total fucking bullshit, but one was enough to illustrate the point. Anyways, I, I posted that video. That was the last video that I posted after that was done and the recommended for you. There was three more by the same guy talking about pull-ups again. So I watched him. Once again, I took some notes. Most of what was said was total fucking bullshit, and I'll share that with you now. So after watching this guy's videos, his name was Athlean X, I've started to understand the equation here. Athlean X plus pull-up advice equals horse shit. That's pretty much what it is. So the first video we're gonna talk about was called Can't Do Pull-Ups, The Real Reason Why, and he's trying to pin it on the brachioradialis this time. So I quote, people are puzzled by why that is regarding chin-ups being easier. Quote, if I go underhand, that contribution's gone. A lot of pull is being exerted through that muscle. And he's trying to explain that the reason people struggle with pull-ups is because of the brachioradialis. So let's talk about this real quick and explain why that doesn't make any fucking sense. The brachioradialis is responsible for elbow flexion. Its capacity to produce force is at its highest with the neutral grip because that's when it can produce the most amount of force based on its orientation of where it starts and finishes. So even if you go with an underhand grip or an overhand grip, it's still going to be responsible for producing force to perform elbow flexion. The only difference is with an underhand or overhand, it's going to be more inclined to pull back to its strongest position because that is where it's strongest. So since it's strongest in that position, when you're doing a pull-up, it's actually in its strongest position. If my elbow was in front of my body, now it's more of a pronated position. As I come out to the side because of the rotation, it's now in its strongest position. So why this doesn't make sense is he's trying to say that this small muscle is responsible for why pull-ups are harder, even though in the pull-up position, this muscle is in its strongest position. Its capacity to produce force is at its highest. How the fuck does that make any fucking sense? It does not at all. So he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. The second video was called How to Do More Pull-Ups Instantly. Now, anytime you see anybody talk about doing something more instantly, like get rich quick, get rich instantly, it's usually total fucking bullshit. Now, his principles here made sense. You can't shoot a cannon out of a canoe. Stability is a prerequisite to force generation. So that made sense. And the first tip that he gave to beginners was to do some sort of scapular depression. So he's talking about hanging from a pull-up bar and pulling yourself up without bending your arms to activate the lower traps. The direction of effort there is identical to when you're doing a pull-up or a chin-up. So there's going to be transference. Then he said for the more advanced person, they need a more advanced activation drill. And I was like, okay, here we go. He's talking about retraction. So what he did real quick, was he hung from the bar, he pulled halfway up, and he protracted and retracted. The direction of effort was forward and backward. It's not the same as a pull-up or a chin-up, therefore the transference is going to be low. Anyways, I understand what he was trying to say, that if we can activate the smaller stabilizing muscles, we'll have more stability and we can produce more force. But at what cost is this taking place? So, and I quote, he says that this type of movement or activation drill, it's not that challenging. It's only an isometric. The challenging part is to get yourself out and stabilize and get yourself in and stabilize. Then he says, you're going to allow the lats to become stronger. Now, you can increase their capacity to produce force by being more stable. That does make sense, but you're not going to allow the lats to be stronger. Because what's happening when you're doing an isometric contraction? When you're lifting a weight, when the weight is in motion, momentum lowers the mass to overcome. But to hold that weight in position, so let's say you weigh 200 pounds, you're doing a pull-up. If you produce more than 200 pounds of force, you're going to move your body up. As your body's moving, the force required to keep it moving is going to be less because momentum is lowering the mass to overcome. If you were to stop, now the momentum uh, is taken out and the mass to overcome is back to 200 pounds. So you're keeping the muscles responsible for moving your body engaged for a sustained period of time. What's going to happen is they're going to become a limiting factor because if a muscle doesn't have an opportunity to disengage, it's going to be fatigued. So at what cost is this activation drill uh, coming with? So what's happening is the lats and the biceps are holding an isometric contraction. And as he's doing this protraction and retraction, you're recruiting and fatiguing the biggest, strongest muscles responsible for producing force to perform the direction of effort when it's time to do your pull-ups in the first place. So how does that make any fucking sense? Why do you want to recruit and fatigue? Now I get what he's saying. If you're strong enough to do 10 or 20 pull-ups already anyways, then it shouldn't be that bad. But irrespective of how strong you are, you're keeping the biggest, strongest muscles engaged.
to perform a direction of effort that will not carry over to what the fuck you're trying to do. It makes no sense. So then he goes on to demonstrate by banging out pull-ups like nothing. This is akin to somebody, you know, trying to show how good a technique was to help their bench press. And then they throw a plate on the bench press and they just start repping it out. And they're like, oh, look, look how good that technique worked. You were good with 135 before. This guy probably weighs like 150 pounds. You were good at pull-ups before. The technique that you did, you're not showing the effect that it had because you were already able to do all those pull-ups. In fact, after you demonstrated the technique, you are out of breath for the most part. And why is that? Because you were recruiting and fatiguing the muscles, the biggest, strongest muscles more. So the demand was higher. You're exhausting yourself. And how is that going to improve performance? It doesn't make any fucking sense. The third video is called Pull-Up Problem Solved. Now, in this one, some 70-year-old guy wrote in. And this guy was able to do pull-ups for like 70 years old. And he said, all he's been doing is taking this guy's advice. Now, here's the thing here. If you go from doing nothing to doing something and imposing a demand, you're going to get some results. The extent of your results will obviously be limited by how smart you are and whether you know what the fuck you're doing or not. So it's not to say that this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Just the advice he's giving is incomplete and inaccurate for the most part. But if you can get people to work hard, they'll get results. So anyways, the 70-year-old writes in and he says, when I do like 10 or 12 pull-ups, uh, my form starts to go to shit. Why is that? And should I keep going? So then this guy says, the reason that happens, it has to do with strength and stability of the lower traps. And he says, and I quote, fatigue starts to set in and you lose the ability to keep your shoulder blades together. So we got to take a look at this. This guy just doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. So what's happening is this guy's doing pull-ups and he starts to fatigue. And what's happening is the elbows start to come forward and he's losing his position and he's losing his stability as a result. So what's happening here is what muscles are responsible for the direction of effort? The lats primarily and the biceps to some degree. So as you start to fatigue, you're telling your body, we need to get up to that bar. And the muscles are saying, we either are not strong enough or in this current state of fatigue, we can't produce the force necessary to do it. And the brain's saying, well, somebody's got to do it. And the body's always going to try to take the path of least resistance. This is just how it's designed. So the biggest, strongest muscles are going to say, oh, me, me, I'll do it. Put the stress on me. And the brain's going to say, all right, well, to do that, we're going to have to modify the way that the body is positioned because a muscle's capacity to produce force is at its highest when it's at or near its mid-range. At its longest and shortest positions, its capacity is lower. So what's happening is, as you're saying, I need to get up to that bar, and the muscles are saying, we can't do it, and the biggest, strongest ones are saying, dump it on me. It's like, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We have to go into a position where the biggest, strongest muscles can produce the most amount of force. It's strictly consequential that you're protracting your shoulders. You're not doing it because the lower traps are weak. If that was the issue, it would have been weak right from the very start of the set. What's happening is the biggest, strongest muscles are failing, they're fatiguing, and what you're trying to do with the pull-up is you're trying to put them in their longest position, you get into their strongest position, and you're trying to go back into the shortest position, which is one of their weakest positions. And to prevent you from getting into that position because the muscles are too weak or you're too fatigued, the body, instead of letting you get there, it's going to prevent it any way that it can. So you're going to protract by default because what you're saying is I need to get to the bar. That's the only cue that you're concerned with. Now, should you stop? Well, it depends on what your goal is. If you want to impose a demand and direct stress onto the biggest, strongest muscles in their strongest position, then go ahead. Do you want to practice doing it that way? Probably not. Because if you want long-term progression, you've got to overload your muscles throughout their entirety. So you've got to find ways to impose a demand on the muscles in their longest and their shortest positions. So if you don't do that, you're limiting yourself. But should you stop and wait for the next set, that really depends on the demand that you want to impose and the risk involved. If you're going to get injured, then obviously maybe you don't want to do that. But if you want to just keep the biggest, strongest muscles under tension for just a little bit longer then knock yourself out. So that was something that I wanted to share because most of this guy's advice is just total fucking garbage. But a lot of people are buying it. A lot of people are buying this shit. They're caught up in the hype. The guy looks the part. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. And as long as he just keeps talking quick and stuff like that, nobody's ever really going to question it. But I'll leave you with a quote. Jay-Z said it best when he said, because you don't understand him, it don't mean that he's nice. It just means you don't understand all the bullshit that he writes. Now, obviously, I took that out of context a little bit. This guy's not writing anything, but all it means is that just because you don't understand him, because you don't know better, doesn't mean that he knows what the fuck he's talking about. You want real information explained in a way that anybody can understand it? Click the fucking button at the bottom, subscribe to this channel, and I'll keep bringing you the best that you're going to find.